So this is a kind of, before we get started today on our Java programming, uh, we are going to take a slight detour and look at uh, VirtualBox to show you that, because I haven't shown you that yet. What you're looking at is a finished VirtualBox installation that uh, was put together to run one, two, three, four simulators, or uh, emulators, however you want to call it. And uh, I showed you this working yesterday, but I didn't show you how to install it or what to do with it. So. I'm going to briefly show you how to do that. If you open up Google and you type in uh, VirtualBox, here it is right here, it's the first one that comes up, and you go to the Oracle VM Virtual Machine VirtualBox website, you see this lovely little icon like the program that I have down here. This is the icon, VirtualBox. If you click on the downloads, and if you have a MacBook, this works great. In fact, I highly recommend using the virtual boxes instead of the built-in emulators for Android development. It works fantastic on a MacBook. On a Windows system, it's a bit buggy, but if you have a MacBook, you're in great shape. So click on the downloads, and no, I'm not selling MacBooks, and I don't get a commission. But uh, <coughs> I just have noticed that it emulators in general. Sometimes you have to, okay, so if you're on a Windows system and you're not getting good results from it, go into your BIOS and make sure that you have the settings so that the underlining hardware is visible. There's a protective, there's a couple of different settings in the BIOS that have to be adjusted on your, especially if you're working on a modern day computer, to make emulators and um, virtual machines work better. Go online, Google it. There's a way of fixing your hardware a little bit to make it work, but it's not going to get, you're not going to ever get the same performance as you're going to get on a MacBook. Um, but anyway, long story short, uh, go into the downloads for the virtual box and you're going to, if you're on a MacBook, you're going to download this one here or this one here, depending upon if you're on a 64-bit or on a 32, you're probably going to be on a 64. So you have the VirtualBox OS X host x86 AMD 64. You have the uh, OS X host is what you want, or otherwise if you're on the uh, Windows platforms, pick the version that's appropriate, or Linux. It actually works well on Linux as well. So go ahead and download, you should have a DMG image here. And this is VirtualBox 4.2.6, which is, I believe, the current version that I have. And um, I'm going to take a look here to see if mine is actually current. And uh, mine is 4.2.6 as well. So mine is the most current version that you're looking at. And uh, how does this window shut? Okay, I'll just shut it right now. Uh, so I'm not going to download it because I already have. Once you download it, you double-click on it, you drag the image over to your Applications folder. If you're on a Windows system, once you download it, you double-click on it. A couple of questions on the install, nothing tri everything trivial, nothing too complicated. And it'll install, and then you'll put it into My Programs or something like that, and then you'll be able to run it from there. So I'm sure that the install is fairly straightforward. So what ends up happening is when you open this up initially, and this is the same for both platforms, the interface looks identical. This is going to be empty. So you have another task that you need to do, and you need to download what's called an x86 ISO file for Android. So it's an x86 build for Android, which means it works on it. This is also x86 compatible, so on the MacBook. Uh, so what we're going to do now is open up uh, Firefox again and come in here now. Instead, we're going to search on x86 Android. Uh, I can go emulator, virtual box. I'm going to pick emulator here, and I'm going to get the wrong ones. I'm going to get, I'm going to get the using X Android emulator here. This is going to be Android's. This is the X. This is actually an X86 build as well, but it's made by Android. That's not what I really want. I want the ISO file, so I'm going to actually type in .iso, <clears throat> and then I'm going to see ASUS. I'm going to see bootable Android ISOs. Um, here's another one here. Um, basically, what you're going to need to do is search around. There's about four or five different websites that have different ISOs. In fact, here's one here. You just click on it, you download it. If you'd like, um, come see me at the break. I have a couple of them that I've been using myself, and I have saved them in the ISO form. And so if I go into my computer here, go into Homes, go into Documents, I see I've got this one here, which is a 2.2 emulator, and this one here, which is a 2.3 emulator. If you give me a USB key, I drag it over, stick it on uh, your USB, and you can follow along with the instructions um, to see how that works. 
I just got this one from another student this morning. This is a 4.2. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it out. So we're going to experiment with it. Uh, but in any case, if it doesn't work, I'll go and show you how to do one of the other ones. But uh, download the ISO file. You don't have to install the ISO file. You can just run it as is. So when you download it and you put it somewhere, make sure you're going to keep it there, not on your desktop. So I put it in uh, my documents or my home directory or something like that. Uh, if you go down to here, soft media, this is probably going to be a, a, you know, a scam site or something of that nature. Um, so don't uh, don't go to the BitTorrent. You don't need to use that. Don't go to the scam sites um, or the you know the share this, share that. Um, here's an open source project here. Actually, this one here is where I got mine from. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is zoom in a little bit, especially for people who are watching this video. Um, Code.google.com forward slash p android x86 or go to the x86 android open source project support for x86 into the downloads and you're going to see here it depends on your architecture if you have an asus machine a lot of people download these images and install it get rid of windows and install android on your asus computer there's one for lenovo on here there's gateway support because your hardware is going to be a little bit different you don't need to install it your hardware, unless you want to use Android instead of Windows on your computer. Um, as best of my knowledge, there's nothing that works for a, an outside of the virtual box on a MacBook. But you can take uh, cheap hardware, those little netbook things, and turn them into Android netbooks really easily. In fact, some of them are even sold that way. So the manufacturer is free, don't pay for it. Uh, these are 4.0 images. If you go down, I have a multi touch testing ones for the app, APK ones for, you know, if you have modern day hardware, uh, camera stuff, virtual box stuff. Um, but these are the ISOs, the current ones. You can actually find older ones on there as well. Um, so hunt around, find yourself an ISO, and then come back to the uh, virtual machine. And here's what we're going to do. So imagine nothing is here, and you click on the start menu. And if you're going to, oops, not the start menu, excuse me. <laughs> That's how I'm going to run one of these things. I click on the new. So we're going to set up a brand new. I'm going to set up the one I just got from a student here. So I'm going to click on new. If you're using an ISO and you're going to boot the ISO and not install it, you don't need to reserve any hard drive space or anything. All you have to do is essentially run the ISO file. It's almost like a live disk. You stick the disk in the CD-ROM drive and you boot up the computer and it loads up that way. So I'm going to call this one that uh, I have a naming convention actually because I have some installed and I have some that are running live. The ones that are installed are called Android and the ones that on my, my system. So I'm going to call this emulator because it's running just the ISO file and it's not running an installed version of it in hard disk space. So, so I'm going to call this one emulator 4.2 which is I believe that image was. Leave the type on Linux, because it is a Linux variation. Um, and then down here for the version, I like to put it on like 2.6, not the 64-bit. Uh, I find it runs faster if I just go back down to 32 on this. So I go 2.6 as the type. You don't really need this. All this is does is it gives you better default settings. You can change all of this stuff. I'm going to press continue. For the memory size for the virtual machine, it doesn't really take up that much memory, but I do like to put this on 512 because it loads a little faster. The default is 256 grams. This is, so this is going to take up 512 of my 8 gigs that I've got on here when it's running, which is a little bit more, it's a hog, but it runs faster for me, gives me better performance. Um, so you can leave it on 256 if you wanted to. Go ahead and press continue. And I'm going to click on do not add a virtual hard disk because I don't want to reserve my hard disk space to reformat it for a virtual box. Instead, I'm going to run the ISO file. I'm just going to boot it up. And hopefully it will be a live disk. So I don't know what I've got here. So uh, Press create, so do not add. If you're going to install it, then you want to add. Don't make it one gigabyte unless you want to really waste your space. Or excuse me, don't make it more than one gigabyte. Um, I, you can see down here the last emulator that I created, I made it one gigabyte. Hopefully you have a pretty big system. The default is, I believe, eight gigabytes. You don't need eight gigabytes. So if you do create a virtual drive now or use an existing virtual drive, 
Um, make sure you make it about one gig or so. On the uh, using virtual hard drive space, let me warn you about something here. If you use multiple virtual hard drive spaces for multiple VMs that you've installed, you're sharing files and you're going to take up more space. Which means if you're going to have one image file that you're going to use for all your VMs, make it more than a gig. Make it one gig for each one of them. But personally what I would do is make a separate hard drive for each one of your VMs that you're installing. Because then you're not going to have any corruption or anything, any, any chance of running out of space. And uh, you can set it so it doesn't grow, so it doesn't, doesn't eat up all your hard drive space. But for right now, uh, we're going to assume we're not going to install it, so we're not going to do anything. So do not install. If you do click it, you know, it's going to say, you know, you're about to create a new virtual machine without a hard drive. Yeah, I'm just going to treat it like a CD-ROM drive. So I'm going to go continue. A little bit of a warning there. So now I have it. It says Emulator 4.2. That's how I got Emulator 2.3 and Emulator 3.2 and all that other stuff. But if I run it, I'm going to have a problem. If I press on Start, it's going to come up with a problem. It's going to say, hey, we don't have anything. Nothing's loaded in the drive. So I'm going to close this here and set it up. <coughs> so when I set it up, I'm going to go back in here. Instead of going new, I'm going to go into Settings, which you'd think they, you know, the install would have you do it automatically, but it doesn't. And I'm going to go into Storage. And now I see I have a fake IDE controller over here that's empty. If I click on the empty, and this is my fake hard drive that's working. Not my fake hard drive, my fake CD-ROM drive, or DVD drive, I should say, because I have a DVD drive on here. You don't need a DVD drive on your computer. It's an emulator. It's a fake one. So you come over here and you click on it. It doesn't look like you can click on this sucker over here, but it is a clickable icon. You click on this guy here, and it opens up a little dialog window. And down here you can see the other ones I've installed. Or I can say, choose a virtual CD DVD disk file. And I've selected that option. Now I'm going to go to this file that I downloaded, and I believe it is called, is this it? Uh, 4.2. This is the one. Click on the ISO file that you downloaded. You cannot move the ISO file once you set this up, unless you go back through and do this again. That's why I say when you download it, put it somewhere where it's going to stay. I put it in the Documents direct, uh, folder. So I'm going to go OK. So now I have this, and I'm going to click on this live CD because I want to boot to the CD-ROM drive. So I'm going to make it a live CD. And uh, I have uh, this one I'm going to put on as a primary, uh, primary master. It said secondary on there. I'm going to put primary. So it's just like an old booting computer, you know, old x86 computers. And which drive do you want to boot first? Uh, so this is going to be, it actually it works on secondary as well because if you go into general, you can go into, um, you know, change your description, change all that stuff we did, and if we go into system here, I can change it so it doesn't boot the floppy, it doesn't boot the hard drive, but it boots the CD-ROM drive. It doesn't really matter, it's going to go through the list. It will boot a little bit faster if it doesn't have to search for floppy, it doesn't have to search for hard drive. Leave the other settings alone until you run into problems. Um, another thing that I'd like to do, actually, is kind of flip through this a little bit for you and just show you what's here. This is setting up your virtual computer, essentially. So you're basically telling it what hardware you have and what, how you're going to use it with this virtual machine. So this is the basic tab, which is going to be what the stuff we picked in the wizard. The advanced tab, you're know, probably not going to change very much here. It's a disable the clipboard escapes, disable dragging and dropping, because this is a, an Android system. It's not really compatible with my host operating system. So I'm not going to drag and drop in between the two of them. Under the system tab, this is where you can change that base memory. So if you didn't select 512 or if you want to adjust the memory, you can. The boot order, um, all the other features. So enabling I.O. and APIX, these are things that we're going to select if the hard drive doesn't work. Excuse me, if the ISO file doesn't work. So don't go ahead and change that yet. <laughs> Another thing I do like to do is because I have a pretty decent amount of memory. I think I believe that I have like at least two gigs of video RAM on my computer. It makes it ro load faster and it makes it more colorful if I increase the RAM. I actually, by default, I like to put this on 32. And my emula emulators, they record better for my YouTube videos and stuff. So, And I just don't get as much flickering. If you notice any flickering with your visual, uh, with your 
virtual boxes, you know, flickering, uh, slow screen um, redisplays, um, slow response with a GUI, then uh, raise your video RAM. It's by default, it's really low. Uh, monitor can't, I'm going to leave that alone. Don't put this on yet until we have problems. Sometimes we'll see error messages that'll tell us we need to put 3D acceleration on. So don't add anything unless you have an issue. And then down here, um, if we had hard drives, if, we, if, if I actually had some fake virtual drives, there are those one gigs created, I can actually switch between them and add them up, but I don't want this one to do that. Audio is just going to be a straight pass through. The network we're going to look at in a few minutes. We'll leave, leave it on NAT for right now. We have to put in some port forwarding in order to change this to make it work with the Android development tools. But let's see if this one works first. Ports and shared folders, you can go through and play around with that. Go ahead and press OK. And it comes back. And now I have the 4.2 powered off. So I'm going to go ahead and start it and cross my fingers and see what happens. I've never started this version. This is a ISO file that somebody gave me. Oh, look at that. It looks pretty good. So I stopped the boot menu by pressing the up and down arrows. The up and down arrows should work. And for my computer, if you're on a MacBook, choose the Versa mode all the time. V-E Versa, VESA. V-E-S-A mode works on a MacBook. Other computers, you might actually have to pick other modes. Um, if you wanted to, for example, install this, this is the option right here. It says, we're running this as live CD mode. And um, if you want to, without the installation, this is going to pick the video mode for you. This is going to pick the Visa mode. Or install it to the hard drive. Well, it's going to install it to the virtual disk that you've set up, if you set one up. Which is what I've done here. So this is how I have the emulators here that are running the live disk. And then this one's, I, I've, and this is my own naming scheme. You might want to come up with your own as well. Or, the, or use this one. This one that says Android on it, well, that's because I went over here and I actually installed it. So it's not running from the ISO anymore. It's running from the Android um, virtual disk that I've installed. And what's the benefit of that? Well, I can save stuff there. I'm not taking a CD and sticking it in my drive and booting to the CD all the time. Instead, I can build apps and save it there and adjust it, and adjust the pictures and settings and stuff, and don't have to come back through and keep changing everything every time. Um, but it does take up a gig for each one of those on my drive. So I'm going to go ahead and press return on v VESA mode. And uh, let's see what happens. It says, uh, the virtual machine reports that the guest operating system supports the mouse integration. Um, I'm going to click on this don't show this message again. You can read your message on the screen. It means you have to use a hotkey combination, and it's the command with the left shift, which is actually says, tells you this on the bottom of the screen here. When you click in the virtual box, the virtual box is going to capture your mouse, and you're not going to be able to use your mouse outside of the virtual box until you press this key combination. So I'm going to press OK. And I can see it's sort of trying to boot here. It looks like the Android emulator, which is kind of interesting. I actually have a prompt here. It didn't boot automatically, which is interesting. Um, so this is a non-GUI em Android emulator. I don't know if I want to use this one, but it's nice. Actually, it's a nice little Linux Android box. So if you have uh, writing Android code, this is uh, this emulator appears to be um, giving me the ability to. Uh, I wonder what it supports. Uh -huh. No, nothing really is installed on here. Uh, Interesting. It didn't give me GUI. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another little test here. I'm going to close this guy. I'm going to start him up again, and I'm going to pick the first option to see if maybe it just doesn't support the video. So I'm going to start her up again. And uh, without installation, run x86. Okay, let's do it this way. Uh, test. Calibration failed. Detecting. And so the video mode is slightly different on this one. And uh, I'm going to give it a few more minutes to see if it boots. Um, we're not getting a GUI mode. At the fast SST calibration failed. So here's the problem with some of these builds. This is very typical, actually. Uh, it's typical because this build was somebody's home homebrew built, who built it. And what they did is they, they made it work for their computer which means if there's hardware, it's like a Linux build. If there's hardware that I don't have, then uh, there's going to be a problem. 
that's going to do something like this, which is kind of amazing. I'm going to leave mine on here because now I actually have a Linux. I don't have anything installed on it, but now I know what it does, which is actually kind of cool. So I'm going to show you another option here. And uh, at the break, you can come get this file from me, actually. I'm going to change this one here. So I'm going to go back into settings. And uh, I'm going to temporarily switch so you can see what's supposed to happen. So I'm going to take it, go down here, and I'm going, to just, I'm going to just test my configuration to make sure that it is truly the ISO file that's having the problem and not anything having to do with my install. So I'm going to switch it here. I'm going to switch it to the 2.3 R1 generic. This is, uh, and I'm going to show you what's different about this one as well at the same time. So I'm going to go OK. And now I'm going to start this one. So what I did is I just clicked on that little button there. I don't know, I did it kind of fast. I have a tendency to run a little bit faster. So let's see, I clicked on the, uh, let me go back and show you what I did. I clicked on the storage tab. I clicked on what used to be the 4.2 one. Clicked on the little guy over here. Because I've loaded them before, it showed it up in my list. So now I'm going to, and these are my hard drives, believe it or not. So, or one of them is. But anyway, anyway long story short, I'm going to click on this guy here, the virtual box one, which is 2.3 emulator. So I'm going to go OK. Now I'm going to start this one up. You can see what it really looks like. So now that when this starts up, looks like it did before. It's all the same x86 build here. This one here, I'm going to install Versa mode. I have a strange feeling the video mode wasn't supported on that other 4.2, which is why I didn't get the results I was looking for. It could be made. It actually might work on your computer. It might that one might work, and another one might work, and another one might not work. This one I've tried. This build here. Is um, I took code that somebody else did and I added something to it and I modified it. And if this works on Mac perfectly flawlessly and I can give it away for you, it's my own personal build. And uh, it's modified for teaching because everything is huge. <laughs> it's like uh, when you see it, you'll see, whoa, that's like, uh, it's because if you're sitting in the back of the room and I'm trying to show you something on an Android emulator, it's hard to see it with the little, you know, itsy bitsy little icons on it. So you can even see right now, this is huge. Even the word Android is a little bit big. Um, I'm running this from the ISO. It runs a little bit slower that way. So if you install it, then you'll have uh, here. Here it is. Here. Well, actually, this is uh, okay. So this build here comes up like this. It's not quite ready yet. It's still loading. It runs a little bit faster from the install. And uh, this is okay. So now I've discovered this is not my huge version. This is the normal size version, and this is the original build. Uh, so this is not mine. This is uh, a variation that was recompiled for the MacBook. So this works on the MacBook uh, OS X. Um, actually, I compiled it for Snow Leopard. It seems to be working on Mountain and Mountain Lion just fine as well. So now you can see the if I move my mouse around, uh, the one buggy kind of problem with this one is that uh, if okay, so I, I plugged, I put my mouse in here, and I should see a blue mouse in here, but I don't. So if I come down to the bottom and I click on it, I can, I can disable the integration mode and then it doesn't do anything. It's kind of backward. The integration mode is kind of a little sketchy. It kind of takes a couple of times to get the mouse to show up in here. And then if I try to get the mouse out, it's not coming out until I click down the shift and then the command button and then it comes out. You see now it's out. It's free. That's the hard, that's the one of the buggiest things. But here, this is the interesting thing in here. It's got a little app in here, and this is the little app over here. This is not mine. I got this one off of the, the, the this came off of the internet. But this simulates the hardware. So it's the menu. You know, so the problem with the emulators is you don't have the hardware, you just have the virtual box. So how are you gonna get the menu? Well, here's the menu button. So if you click the menu button on the phone, so this guy simulates the menu button. So I've got uh, the home button. On the, these are the physical buttons, the audio and everything. So we can see right through there. And then this one here has got just basic generic apps installed on it. In fact, I believe uh, it's, this one is particularly stripped out, so it's a little bit smaller and loads faster. Um, so let me show you something about the differences here. Let me take my mouse out. When you're done with the sucker, I can just power it off. So this one over here is the 2.3 version of it that's installed. 
if I run the installed version of it, it's the same ISO, but I installed it. This is uh, running off of the drive. And you can see what I've done with it. This is what I was talking about in terms of customizing it, which is the reason why sometimes you might want to install it if it doesn't look right. Every time I load it up, it's going to be just like I left it, you know, because it's my own personal install for it. And I believe this one should show super big fonts and super big display. Uh, for, and this is the one I was talking about. Um, and then in there, you can just go into, the, and I move some stuff out, like the settings and stuff, so I can adjust it easily. But um, let's see what happens here. And because I am recording, uh, I do have recording software running in the background. It does run a little bit slower. When I'm not, uh, when I don't have this recording stuff going on, it does run faster. But still, this is still, even with the recording stuff, it's still twice as fast as the Android emulators. If you've gone home last night and played with them. You know that it takes about 10, 15 minutes for the Android emulators to show up. At best, this will be up here in a few minutes with all the other stuff running on this computer. So, <clears throat> so once this loads up, if I'm going to use this with Android, there's another step I have to take. And I have to put on what's called port forwarding, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So I load, if you're going to do this, use this technique, here it is here. And uh, we should have uh, pretty big icons on this guy. Let's see what happens. He finally does load up. Or you know what? I loaded the emulator. I wanted to load this one up here so the Android on it. Hold on a second. This is going to show up just like the other one did. This is the guy I want. Let me load the right one at least. <laughs> and I, well, even with my naming scheme, I can't tell them apart. <laughs> so this is the one I want. All right, while that loads up, I'll show you what the rest of this is all about. So in Android, I'm going to uh, pick up Eclipse. So I, I've, I've loaded up my Eclipse. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I started another emulator in the background here. This is the right one. Um, and uh, if I go ahead and I open up a new project as an example, and uh, you don't have to do this, but uh, I'm going to just demonstrate how the emulator works. And uh, I go Android. I'm just going to do Hello World like we did yesterday. Um, so I'm going to call this Hello World. And I'm cl clicking on Next. And I'm just going to use all of the defaults for everything. And uh, click on Next. And click on Next. And finish it here. So now I have this uh, project that I've created. And here it is. This is the background. See, this is the one I've customized for teaching because... I drag the development tools and I drag the settings and I stuck them on the desktop and uh, I moved the uh, that little that little icon. This one doesn't have the little icon, so this is my own build. So it's missing the little icon from the other build. So if you're if you if you know anything about programming, if you've ever built a Linux kernel before, same kind of concept, very similar. This is a Linux build that you create and then you turn it into the ISO. There's, if you go out to the uh, x86 project, all of the source code is available for you. All the build tools are available for you. You definitely have to be a computer science type person in order to figure it out though. And it definitely requires a com compilation and a com familiarity with Linux actually to, to make that happen. If you want this one, you can get this one from me as well. I can actually give you the virtual hard disk and you can install the virtual hard disk. I have a 4.0 version of it as well, if you're interested in that. But I like this one for teaching because everything is really super big. So this one here, oh, here it is. This guy, I moved him down, which is why I didn't see him. But uh, this one here, you look at it, all the icons are big. And then this, he's going to bring me back to the home button. And you can see, actually, here, I have some icons in here. I have an i2 mobile app in here. Yeah, this is all my own personal stuff. So it's as if I actually have an Android device and I've saved stuff on here, uh, which is the benefit you get from doing it yourself, actually, or from installing it. And I actually have a fake SD card as well that works with this. So I'm going to leave this guy running and I'll show you how you connect it to, because this is a trick uh, that a lot of people are, um, you know, sometimes miss. Uh, so out here I have this project running. In order to connect this guy with this guy, I have to set up what's called port forwarding. So I go back into VirtualBox, and this can be running, should be running. I go back into Vir VirtualBox. 
I see that I'm running this guy here. I'm going to click on the settings, and we're going to network them together. And we're going to use what's called port forwarding, because that's what the Android is using to connect to the emulators. And again, you got to have sort of a Unix background to sort of see how this works. But it's imagine in a network system, you're just pinging a port. If it's open, you're going to connect to the port. And here we're going to forward the port because we don't know what I don't know what port this is going to actually be on. Um, and this is why it runs faster again on a win on a Mac system because this is a BSD based Linux system, actually Unix based system, where it fully supports all the port forwarding, port forwarding, and all of the other Linux type features. Windows, <laughs> a little sketchy. You can't program in threads on Windows. You can't. You normally you can't do very much with ports, but you can because Windows security gets in the way and all the other crap. Um, that's why I say it's a little bit easier on a Mac. It's accomplishable on a Windows system, though. Anyway, so if I click on the Network tab, this one has been configured already. If I have Internet access on the computer, it's going to already take what's on the computer and transfer it to the virtual box. If I click on this little box in the bottom, it says Port Forwarding. I see I have set it up. Yours is going to be empty. So you're going to have to click on this little Add button like that. And I have rule number one. For TCP traffic, Host port 555, the guest port's 555, which means I'm identifying this port for this traffic as 555, 555, four fives. <laughs> You're going to see that in a few minutes in the Android. So you basically do this. You go, I'm not going to do it twice because I'm going to mess it up. I already have the rule. So I'm going to click on cancel. But that's how I got that in there. I click on add and put in. Um, TCP is going to end up automatically for you. If not, write in TCP. Go 555, 555. Now I'm going to tell the Android AVD that this port exists. So in uh, the virtual box, you do this. This is setting up your port forwarding. Once you got, leave it on NAT. And uh, don't worry about it. You can also set, if, if you're having problems getting internet access in your virtual box, because what's the first thing you're going to do is test to make sure you got internet access, I hope. And if you do, that means the virtual box is compatible with your Ethernet drivers and everything on your host system. Most 99% of the time it works, actually, no problem. And this build will work on Mac Ethernet hardware. So this is why I say come over here at the break and I'll give you this ISO file. Leave it on that, it works. Uh, the MAC address, don't worry about that, don't change anything, just leave it alone. Hook up the port forwarding. Then this is all done, you can leave this alone. You only have to do that once, it's like the install of your virtual box. Here's the, and I don't really think that this is a bad step, but it's the extra step you have to take. Every time you reboot your computer or you close the virtual box, you have to run this script. And let me show you the script, I wrote it, it's one line of code. Let me just write. I, I created it. I put it in a file. I called it emulator. So I'm going to nano emulator here. So, so for you people who don't know, nano is like VI. It's an editor for Linux. Open up a notepad. Open up a text edit window. Write a little file called it emulator. It doesn't need a file extension on it. And you're going to run the file. So you can change the pro again from a Unix. You do a change mod. Make it executable. Can just run it, or you can actually, if you're if you're that inclined, you can add it to your startup script, and it runs automatically every time you turn your computer on. If you want to, you just have to run this command here. What does this command do? Well, from the platform tools directory of your Android install, which if you go out and you find your Android install out here, and on this computer I have it in Users B Hacker uh, Android. So if I go into here. And I have an Android directory out here. I have Eclipse out here. This is not the bundle. This is done separately. Yours is going to be in the bundle if you've done it that way. And here, platform tools. Oops, not that one. Platforms. Platform tools next to it. I have this thing called ADB, Android device, uh, which is the ADB manager, which loads up. So ADB, which is your... It's, it's the process that's going to run your emulators, that's going to run, run the Android emulators. It says connect localhost to 555, localhost 555. We, you know, it actually, localhost works because I'm on the same computer. 
So I'm, I'm connecting the ADB to 555. Just actually, if you want the script, just when you come up to pick up the ISB, ISO file, come up and I'll give you this text file to make it easier for you. Uh, I'm going to control X to get out of the screen. To run it, I'm just going to go dot forward slash as it's in my same directory here, I believe. Uh, if I list out what's in this directory, it's right here. It's called emulator. Uh, oh, here it is right here. It's called emulator. It's in here. If I run it, I should get something that looks like this. It says daemon not running, so I have to start it. So it starts it automatically. And it says connected. So you want to see this. You want to see connected to localhost 555. If you do that, then the ADB is connected, which means you need to close the window if you want. Leave the emulator open. And then you go back to Eclipse. And then here you just simply run it. But if on the project you can set the build configuration. So you can come in here and you can go run as, and then you can go run configurations if you want. And if you do run configurations, you can actually set it up. Or actually on the current build, if you just do run as, it already finds the emulator running. So I run as Android application. Because remember, I didn't, run, I didn't run any configuration at all. And it's going to complain about broken pipes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, because I had some security stuff running and I have some recording stuff running. And it is complaining. It's still launching. Here we go. Building, launching. All right, so in my particular case, I have recording software and I have some security software running and I've got some background stuff going on. So I got all this, you know, unhappy error messages that showed up on the bottom. Just ignore that stuff. And it's also this problem here. Yesterday I ran the emulator on here and I didn't close it down properly. <laughs> so I tried to find this one first. And the target, you see, it's got a little question mark on it. It's like, what happened to this thing? I need to, I need to clean this up a little bit. Um, so. We'll just leave that one alone. But you see, this one is running. And I didn't put a name on there. I can set the name of the AVD in uh, virtual box configurations. I left it blank, which is why it comes up. So here it says Android, Android box, which is what I called it. It's running on local host, and it's connected because I ran that script to connect it. So if I press on OK here, the program, although it's going to say broken pipe all over the place, is going to show up in my emulator. And here it is. Here's Hello World. So it automatically goes and it runs on this one instead of the built-in emulators that are running in the, uh, that will come up automatically here. And I didn't set any run configurations or anything, I just found it automatically. If it loads the emulators that are built-in, then what you do is you come down here and you create what's called a run configuration. And the run configuration is just going to create a new item here. In fact, here it is right now because I ran it automatically. If not, you're going to come up here and select new, give it a name, and then down here where it says target, it's going to say automatically pick one of these here. You can actually pick which emulator you want to run it on, and it'll run it on there automatically for you instead of having to pick it from the menu. I don't actually like that. Instead, I always say, um, you know, always prompt to pick the device. And that way I can always pick which one I want. And then I don't have to worry about which one it's going to automatically go to. So you can tell each project which device to run on, which is nice because you can set up multiple projects. And this one runs on 2.3, and this one runs on 4.0, and this one runs on my built-in emulators. And it gives you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more automation. So that's uh, Android emulators on steroids if you want to make your life easier. Not a requirement for anything, but it does make your life easier uh, because, uh, you know, as an example here, if I say, where is that Hello World project? I can come back over here and say, oh, where is that? Here it is. Actually, I've installed it three times. So one of them is different because remember yesterday I put a button on it. Here's the button. You remember that one I ran yesterday? Here it is. And I don't have to, where is that one? Yeah, I don't have to go back to Eclipse and go on it. It's already installed on my emulator. It won't do that for the ISOs because the ISOs are live disks. You can't write anything to it. This is a one gigabyte space that's reserved that's going to store all my stuff. And I can see I have this app here I wrote for ITU a while ago. It's the mobile app. So this is ITU's app if you haven't found it yet in Google. It's in Google Play, actually, as well. So um, all right, so that's a kind of a slight 
get you woken up kind of thing for the morning. Now let's talk about Java. So I'm going to close this down and stop this recording and switch topics on you. Unless we have questions. Questions?